be hauled out to the mills for use as lumber or pulp or plywood. This is sound economy, for trees mature and die, as evidenced by many old forest giants, which could have been harvested when they were ripe. He thins out trees that are weak, diseased, or misshapen, and markets the saleable products for poles, fence posts, ties, or firewood. He leaves the remaining trees well spaced to get the full benefit of sunlight and air and moisture. A well-managed grove will yield three times as much as the average untended woods. Having a farm wood lot on a hill is good land use. It anchors the soil and provides a cash crop in the bargain. Trees planted on a hilltop serve other useful purposes. In some areas, they keep snow from drifting onto the north slopes and prevent the type of soil slips which have ruined many such hillsides. Protected, such land can be put to good use for hay or pasture. Many methods of holding the topsoil in place are helpful. Natural drainage ways carry excess storm water from the fields. Many such waterways provide a hay crop, and they are shaped so that farm equipment can easily be worked across them. Terraces across a sloping field serve as dams to halt the downward rush of storm water and conduct it slowly to the outlets. Of special importance in the grain country are practices which will not only protect the land during the rainy season, but also help maintain the fertility of the soil. For example, a conservation farmer spreads the straw from the combine. He doesn't burn it up, but he scatters it over the field. As one farmer expresses it, leave everything on the land that you don't have to take off to eat or sell. A good field of stubble is now regarded as an asset and not a nuisance. After harvest, the stubble fields are disked lightly or plowed with sweeps so that the straw is left close to the surface and also on top of the ground. This leaves the earth in a rough, cloddy condition as protection against soil blowing away. The stubble mulch turns into plant food quicker when it's close to the surface and it acts as a binder to stabilize the soil. Stubble left on top of the field is not the mark of a careless farmer, but the trademark of a good, progressive operator. When it rains, the spongy mass of rotting stubble breaks the fall of each drop of water, soaking it up like a blotter. Little soil is washed down to the creeks from this kind of a field. Weeds can be kept down in stubble fields by a rod weeder or other tools such as wide sweeps. Such implements leave the valuable mulch near the top of the ground. In the bean and pea areas also, the use of vines as ground holding mulch and fertilizer is being recognized. The vines are returned to the fields and disked in. And dry pea or bean stubble spread on the field from the combines will be turned into the surface. Several related practices contribute greatly toward the main objective of using the land according to its best capabilities. Farming on the contour, strip cropping, and rotation of grains, row crops, and grasses are all part of the conservation way of farming. Contour farming means simply doing all operations on the level, around the slopes, eliminating uphill pulls and resulting in less wear and strain on farm equipment. Square field farming fits in only on flat land, but very little land is perfectly flat. On the hillsides, alternate bands of crop and stubble fallow are laid out in strips running at right angles to the natural drainage. The yield is higher than if the entire area were in crop one year and fallow the next. Alternating strips of clean tilled row crops and thick growing grass legumes hold the soil in place and retard the runoff. Good land use keeps the top of the hills in grass and lower slopes and valleys in rotations that include grasses and legumes. Proper land use often includes raising hay crops on hilltop and hillside land. Good cover of this kind will stop washing almost as well as a permanent forest. Grass legume crops on the hilltops help control the washing that would result on lower slopes if the field were farmed as one unit. 
The cut strip gives access to the grain fields and furnishes a permanent contour guideline for the rotated strips below. Sweet clover and other green fertilizer crops, when plowed into the topsoil, return a vitalizing humus to the land. Sweet clover, alfalfa, and other legumes add nitrogen and make a healthier soil. This is actual soil building to maintain the producing capacity of the land. The results of such practices have been proven time and again in the yields obtained in succeeding years. The development of soil building and erosion resisting grasses is part of the program of the Soil Conservation Service. Hundreds of varieties of seeds are planted and their growth studied in different soils. Promising varieties are grown to increase the seed supply and distributed to soil conservation districts where such grasses are needed to halt erosion and rebuild soil. New combinations of grasses and legumes are developed and tried out in test pastures where the results are determined by the actual pounds of beef which the cattle put on in each. The development of good pastures for dairy herds and for beef cattle as well is an important part of the land use recommendations of the Soil Conservation Service. Proper land planning frequently discloses acreage which is better suited for pasture or hay than for annual crops. Where additional water other than rainfall is needed, sprinkler irrigation is coming more and more into favor in some sections. Cattle are rotated from one pasture to another. This is good conservation because it allows the grasses and legumes to make new growth. Pastures are clipped in their turn as a means of weed control, and thus the grasses and legumes get all the available moisture. Sheep, too, need good pastures, and when they're moved down from the summer ranges, there must be some place for them to feed. The time was when practically all of the sheep raising in the West was done on the open range the year round. Huge bands moved with the seasons, accompanied by herders and dogs and camp wagons. The bands are still on the move, but through irrigation and seedings, we are also developing more ranch pastures where sheep can be carried over winter in good condition. In the beef cattle country, the changes range management have brought about are striking. They are a good and necessary start toward permanence in the livestock business. First, there must be more good grass on the ranges and the ranch pastures. Ranchers are beginning to meet this need by reseeding and in certain tracts from grazing until the grass gets a firm stand which will last from year to year. The good forage plants must be strong enough to hold their own against sagebrush, weeds, and poorer grasses. They must be allowed to produce seed and remain high enough that grazing will not kill them out. The better range grasses, which have a good root structure, will do much toward replenishing the soil on depleted ranges and help prevent erosion. More fencing supplies part of the necessary measures needed to improve the range. Here's a property line fence. On the one side, poor water-scarred land with only the scrubby growth remaining as a direct result of overgrazing. On the other side of the fence, Native bunch grass is being grazed properly, so it stays in excellent condition. There are few bare spots, more water is retained, and a healthy growth of the bunch grass and the shorter grasses beneath is assured. Many ranches have been divided into unit pastures so that each may be grazed in turn and only at the right time. Range surveys by the Soil Conservation Service estimate the amount and condition of the grass on each part of the ranch and recommend the proper season and amount of grazing for each unit. An important factor is that the stock are not turned in too early in the spring. And they graze in one unit only so long so that the grass will be able to grow up again. To help ensure the range against overgrazing, the rancher provides a good quantity of supplemental forage to spread at the ranch feeding area. In many instances, irrigated fields will produce a large hay crop to round out the feed supply. It will carry livestock over between pasture seasons. It's an extra insurance against drought or unexpected lack of feed on the range itself. Supplemental feed also will help increase the rate of gain and improve the condition of the cattle. 
Another factor contributing to permanence of the ranges is the development and proper distribution of water. The Soil Conservation Service assists farmers and ranchers in the construction of stock ponds and the improvement of springs. Well-spaced water supply will prevent too much grazing at any one part of the range. Ponds should be fenced in to protect the banks from damage and the water piped to an area below the dam where it's accessible only at troughs. Thus, the cattle can't trample the pond into a mud hole and the water remains clean. Springs are covered with permanent protection and water is piped away from the spring where the stock can easily reach it. A stock water pond on the farm is conservation in one of its most pleasant aspects. In summer, you can hang your clothes on a hickory limb or swim if you want to and skate in the winter. And with a can of worms and a willow pole, you can take 200 pounds of fish out of an acre pond in just one season. A conservation farm is a good place for people to live. And it's a good place for the wildlife which conservation farming practices encourage. These practices help to increase the numbers of the wild fowl on lakes and rivers and irrigation ditches. They also make it possible for more game birds to thrive in the fence rows and the hay fields. And they keep clear water running in the streams where a man can go fishing and relax after a job well done. Naturally, every farmer is interested primarily in yield and the assurance of next year's yield and the next and the next. There is no question that conservation farming blended with other proven practices increases the quantity and quality of agricultural products. Thousands of examples stand as proof that this common sense way of farming means better use of the land year in and year out. Such a program is needed to supply an ever-increasing population which is steadily moving westward. It is needed as an accompaniment to the development of water resources. Additional dams are furnishing added power to stimulate a growing industrial activity and to supply water to new lands which are suitable for agricultural use. The rapid growth of western industries and the westward migration of people require more and more fertile land and at the same time are a challenge and an incentive to the farmer to meet the need and profit by it. As this program is carried on from year to year, it fosters a stable agricultural community. It succeeds through the effort of farm neighborhoods and the action of farmers together in soil conservation districts. It contributes toward the development of better farms, better farm homes, and better living for the farmer who adds his share of the effort.